Last, last, last take of the day, man. Before I go, before I like, have to go get my haircut appointment, man. The little line right, man, for this weekend, man. All right, let's let's post check ahead of the Falcons game. Saints been, you know, they had a hot start. I ain't, I don't think the fire is out yet. I'm not even a Saints fan. I've been enjoying watching the Saints. I'm repping the Packers. Y'all know, man. Jordan Love, shout out. Hope you return. It's all good, G. It's all good. Uh, he on my fantasy team, so I do hope he returns <laughs> sooner than later. Goddamn. I think he's going back this week, man. I hope. Lord. That money, what's going on, bro? Like, if you get that money, it's in the – Trevor Lawrence is my backup quarterback, and he's been killing me. He's getting all that money, too. Dak Prescott, all that money. Joe Barrow, all that money. Golly. When you pay your quarterback, it's like a Madden cover curse, bro. Saints, though, look. I think last week, this is my excuse for the Saints. and I, I shouldn't even be making excuses. I'm not a fan. But I think Taysom Hill being out played a big role. I think that that offense doesn't revolve around Taysom Hill. No, but there's a lot of options, a lot of pieces where he's in, he's included, he's all over the field, all over the place. When he was out, it made me think, mm, this is an interesting development. This is an interesting change to how I felt about this game. And the fact that the offense looked as slow as it did, for as good as it was going, Clint Kubiak getting all the praise, Derek Carr getting all the praise, and rightfully so. I mean, they balled, especially we're talking about Jerry World with Arkansas and AM. How about Jerry World with the Saints and the Cowboys? Saints walked in there plus two twenty five underdogs, blew them out of the water. They were up by like what, three, four possessions as their largest lead. Um, I think the offense has that potential. I think they need to address life without Taysom Hill potentially. I know he's not going to be hurt for a long time, but what I'm getting at is if if that was the spark in the offense that kind of had y'all get into that 28, you know, 35 point per clip, you're going to have to find a way to do it without him. You got a lot of pieces. You got Shahid. You got Olave. You got some some lookers. You got some. You got Kamara. I mean, you got a lot of different miles that you could feed if Taysom's not in there. I don't know if that was the issue. I don't know. I'm just, you know, hypothesizing. But this week, I think they're going to have to move away from relying on him. If he's in or if he's not, you got a lot of miles to feed. I think you can find one. Lastly, I think the winner of this, like I said at the beginning of the show, they take the NFC South. As premature as that could be, Saints are at plus 145 for the NFC South. Falcons at plus 170. Right now, the Falcons for this game, though, are favored by 2-5. I say take the NOLA plus. I'm not going to lie. No bias in it at all. Like I said, no Saints fan here. So you can trust it. I think they go on the road. I think they kind of answer for what happened last week. They might have a little chip on their shoulder. I think Derek Carr, the offense, they're not done yet. A hot start, I don't think it's cooled off. Now, why I think the NFC South is determined off of this, if the Saints do win, they go back, they play their second game in New Orleans. That plays into their advantage. Don't even think that that matters, though. I think that if you get into this position where this is kind of a blind game where you don't know what you're getting, Right, You don't have any film, really. These are two theoretically new teams, new quarterback on the Falcons side, all this type of jazz. Moving into that second matchup, I think the Saints, Falcons, you kind of know what you're getting. At that point, the best team's going to win. On paper, looks like the most experienced, balanced team. I think I'm going to have to give it to the Saints. I think that it's kind of why I'm leaning on them to take it on the road. I think that if they had a potential third tiebreaker meeting, if, 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 you know, let's say Falcons win the second one, Saints win the first one, I'd even lean on the Saints for the entire series to win that little trilogy, if you will. I feel like, you know, they're at this point now where it's not like you know what you can get from them, but that defense can get you the offense the ball enough to where if they answer the bell and they kind of shoot for, you know, 60 to 70% clip on scoring on their possessions, they're a nightmare in the NFC because there's not been that consistent level of play. Most of your movers and shakers have kind of been all over the place, but that's just what I've seen. I really think this division will come down to the Bucks and the Saints, not the Saints and the Falcons. Uh, don't get me wrong. I, I respect the Falcons. I like what they're doing. I know they won in two, but they're not a typical one and two team. They lost to the Steelers and the Chiefs in really, really close games. So the Saints going to have their work cut off on, on Sunday. Uh, I think they get that offensive line figured out. I think when Eric McCoy went out, what it was, the first or the second quarter, it was too hard for them to try to come up with a plan to shuffle that offensive line around and – have a have a have a, a some packages set up for where it could it could suit them to what they do the best. And so I think Kubiak probably did all that this week. He probably inserted some new new packages that's going to be able to put Derek Carr in his offense in good situations. And I think they get back to scoring a lot of points. I'm not saying they're going to score 40, but I think they go down there and score at least 24, 27 points somewhere around there. And I think the defense shows up like they're supposed to. Kirk Cousins. Uh, veteran quarterback, but Bijan Robinson has been banged up. They're talking about he's questionable for the game. Uh, that, that number one receiver right now is da, uh, is Mooney, the kid that came from uh, the Bears. He's dynamic, but this, this kid shouldn't be leading 
the Falcons in receiving. And so, and for some reason, they don't know how to use Kyle Pitts. Like, Kyle Pitts is somebody that you forget he's on the field. And so, with that being said, I think the Saints are – are um, it's going to be a challenge on Sunday. Don't get it, don't get it twisted. But I think they, they pull out this victory, man. I think they win this game 24-21. A lot of close games this week. A lot of close games. If I had to pick a prediction for the score, I'd go Saints. Damn, I'll give them 31. I think Derek Carr's coming out guns plays, and I don't think the Falcons get past. i give them 20. I ain't even giving them 21. I think the Saints. <laughs> but I hope. If the Saints lose, I think they might take their name out the hat for the division. I know it's pretty much. Chill out, man. Chill out, man. No, don't, I'll don't the do high take that. today. I'm don't so... do that, man. Don't do that, man. Come I on, would, man. Worry I about your Packers. Question. I would really question it. I'm like, man, this is a stunt to the chest too early when the whole city was gawking at the Saints Super Bowl money line. I mean, relax. It went from 10 to zero. Hopefully it goes back to 10 this week. I think we'll be another, fine. Like another thing we're going to have to worry about with this game, Vikings, uh, or excuse me, Falcons, then they beat the Eagles. Yeah. Sure it was that primetime drive. Kirk Cousins went on. Something to think about. Appreciate you hopping on G. Enjoy that haircut, man. All right, man. Appreciate y'all. You on Saturday. This has been a verdict. Verdict. Y'all have a good one.